Hey YouTube, welcome to day seven of the Puzzle Advent Calendar. So for those of you who don't know, the Puzzle Advent Calendar is a huge collaboration between a bunch of cubing YouTubers and puzzle creators. And for the first 24 days of December, there's going to be a video about one of these unique puzzles on somebody's YouTube channel. So I'll leave a link in the description to a playlist of all the videos. And I'll leave a link in the description to the person who's going to be releasing a video tomorrow. Make sure to subscribe to them to check it out. So today's puzzle comes from Josh, also known as CubeDad516, and I don't actually know what I'm getting. So, we're gonna see. This is packaged so well. Alright, let's see what we got. Alright, it comes wrapped too, which is very nice. Cool. All right, so we've got it nice and gift wrapped. This is really exciting. I'm so excited to get into this. It looks like we also have a note from Josh here. Um, I'm not going to open this yet because I want to be surprised by the puzzle first. Let's see what we got. So, it's coming in a Cuban classroom box, but I don't think it's actually a 10 by 10. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. Ooh. It looks 5x5 five five based, but fancy shape mod stuff going on here. Wow. Huh. It's heavy. And that's the first thing I'm noticing right off the bat. It feels like, you know, there's a lot of weight to it. And it looks really nice, too. The stickers... Wow. This is, like, really perfectly cut. Yeah, wow, this is crazy. So I'll get some close-up shots for you guys, but these stickers, these yellow designs on here, are actually cut and placed on top of some black stickers, and that's crazy. They're so perfectly cut. So we've got a snowflake, um, we've got a star, we've got a tree, a present. I don't know if I saw the star yet. Oh, no, there are two stars. There's a black one and a yellow one. And a stocking, and I think that's everything. Yeah, six sides. Cool, so this is some sort of 5x5. Five five. Let's see what the note says. Merry Christmas, DG. Thank you, Josh. So he says it's made out of an original Shangxiao 5x5, five five, which is pretty cool. That's a real throwback. So yeah, this is called the 3x5x5 five 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 Edge Breaker Christmas Cube Octahedro. Um, I thought I read that wrong. It is cube octahedro. So Josh explains that normally when you cut the corners down on a cube like this, it becomes a cube octahedron. Um, but he didn't cut them down all the way, so he just calls it a cube octahedro, because it's very close, and I really like that. <laughs> yeah, so the stickers are cut by Chewy's Custom Stickers. If you're curious about what this letter says in its entirety, I'll just leave a link to a picture of the letter in the description below, and you can read the whole thing. But thank you so much, CubeDad516. I'm really excited to get into this, scramble it, and see if we can can solve it but first let's do a couple turns wow okay so yeah so what i'm understanding right off the bat is that you can turn some single layers like this like as you can see this single layer can turn on its own but like this one can't this has to turn as a double layer and i'm already scared <laughs> bandaging puzzles are always really difficult and, um, yeah, I'm just kind of scared to see uh, how the bandaging is going to affect the solve here. But we'll see. I'm really going to try to solve this. But first, let's scramble it up. One last look so I can sort of understand what's going on here. Yeah, I get it. We'll be fine, right, guys? All right, let's do this. I'm, th I'm trying to think if there's any, like, technique to scrambling this. Because, like, as you can see, the bandaged pieces are not bandaged, like, all the way. They're band it's bandaged into, like, a 2 by one block and not a 2 by 2 block. So, um, when it's fully scrambled, it seems like it's going to be pretty rare that you'll actually be able to turn any single layers. Um, so I think it would be smart to get it so we can scramble up the single layers first, and um, then do that a little bit extra when, whenever we can. The next thing I'm noticing is that these are bandaged too. These corners are also bandaged, but only in one direction. So I had, um, like, on this, on this top layer... I have it so it looks like it should be able to cut through here, and here, and here, and here on all the edges, but it can't cut through there on all the corners. It gets blocked here, and so that's going to be a problem. So it looks like we're going to... There we go. Now we can do these sorts of turns. But um, that's insane. Josh, you're crazy. <laughs> oh, and this is interesting. On all the, the midges, the middle edges here, they're not all bandaged at all. Like, this one here is not even a little bit bandaged. This is totally separate from these pieces, so that's interesting. 
Okay, I'm gonna call this scrambled for now, and let's go over to the solving station and see what we can do. All right, so here we are. First thing that comes to mind is that the bandaging will never affect any of these three layers. So you can always turn it like a thick three by three. So in other words, these two outer layers will never be stuck to this third layer or anything like that. So we always have a three by three. So we should be able to solve the centers, which you know is gonna be all of this um, on every side. We should be able to do that just by turning these layers. Um, and we will incidentally solve some edges too because some centers are bandaged to an edge. But let's try it. I'm gonna start with this center because we already have a little bit done and we'll see what we can figure out. Yeah, that looks good to me. We've got most of this center. We should probably be able to do this to match those two. And this one, like that. Aha. Oh, wait, no, what? Oh. Oh, this is dangerous. Ooh, okay. So, I thought I would be able to just turn this around and get this up there. But I can't because that ends up moving this corner out of the way. If I do a U2 and then try to bring this, uh, th this group of three up here, it doesn't quite work out. So we're going to need to find some ways around that. My new thought is that it's not actually that smart to be solving just a random center. I think we need to make that center unbandaged. So I'm going to try to make this layer unbandaged, and then we'll come back to this center. So now I'm learning another problem. When you get a layer unbandaged, it's very hard to do more turns and keep it unbandaged. And we can get that in like this. Okay, in the end, I was actually able to get a center just by sort of messing around. It seems like getting the corner pieces first is gonna be the move, and then we can get the edge pieces in after that. Edge pieces are easy. Corner pieces are tricky because they often get moved by these moves that we're doing. Let's try the opposite center. Maybe the way to do it is not to solve this in a reduction way. See, I was thinking that it would be smart to solve one center, then another center, then all the centers, and then solve the edges, you know, pair them together, like you do with a normal 5x5. Five five. It doesn't seem like that's a good way to do it. It seems like what would really be best is somehow reducing it to this sort of 3x3. Three three. To do that, we would need to get all these corners together. We would need to get all the edges together. And that seems awfully difficult to me. I honestly have no clue how to go about doing that. Yeah, so you know what? I'm going to take a break, and I'm going to come back, and we're going to solve this thing. Okay, so I found out pretty early that solving this like a normal 5x5 five five was not going to work. And I set my sights to unbandaging it to the best of my ability. Look at that. So we got it to a five-layered puzzle. Now what? <laughs> But wait, this is a 3 by 5 by 5 So there should be only one bandaged layer. So the bandaged one should be here, 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 and then parallel like this. So the bandaged one should make two rings. So we can try to make those rings at the very least. I think that's a fair start. So this was a key realization. This is a 3x5x5, by five by five and not a 3x3x5, three by three by five, which means that only one axis should really be bandaged. So now it was a matter of moving the pieces in such a way that I could unbandage two layers at the same time, and that involved moving those bandaged pieces around in the way that I just talked about. The corners being bandaged is the worst thing that I've ever seen in the world, I think, actually. Oh! No, it's not. Because we can only- we could just rotate corners with a double soon, and that won't affect anything else. So I take it back. That is one of the greatest things I've ever seen in my life. So, uh, this was a key realization as well. So now we have a new ability, which is rotating the corners any way we want. So the corners, of course, are going to be the huge 2x2 two two blocks on every corner of the puzzle, and we now know how to rotate them, uh, because, you know, they're bandaged in one direction, so sometimes we will need to rotate them to uh, figure out how to unbandage certain parts of the puzzle. So this was really important. Woo! Okay, look at this. We have a U layer that can turn on its own, uh, an F layer that, what? Oh, an F layer that can turn on its own. A B layer that can turn on its own. 
and finally, a D layer that can turn on its own. No matter what you say or do, these layers are here for you. And that's what I always say. So I was still sort of stuck on this reduction mindset of getting all the centers and then solving it like a three by three in the end. And I was actually able to make some progress with that. Oh, look at that. So we have a center. We additionally have all our layers still intact. So there's no bandaging going on on these layers or on these layers, which is pretty good. We'll try to get the opposite center now. This is, I fear, more difficult. And it was. Uh, I did not make any further progress with this despite my best efforts, so I decided it would be best to take a break. All right, break time. Progress, zero. <laughs> And I ended up coming back with an idea. So the idea was, okay, standard reduction might not be the best idea, but we can reduce those thick corners to become a thick three by three. So we would have the two by two by two corners and the two by two by one edges reduced, and then we would have a huge three by three. And so the first step to this, of course, is reducing the corners. I was really scared to do this, and that was why I didn't start with this idea from the beginning, because reducing something other than the innermost pieces seemed really scary. Uh, when you're reducing stuff on the outside, it's scary because those are the layers that you're turning in order to reduce the other pieces. So I really didn't want to have to reduce, uh, you know, all the eight corners on the cube, but I decided to start out with just one and see how it goes. And uh, here's the result. Yes. Beautiful. We have successfully reduced a single corner. We just need to do that with more of them. All of them. <laughs> so even though I had one corner, I wasn't feeling that good at this point, because there are seven more to do, plus other centers I haven't even looked at, plus edges I haven't even looked at. And also, I hardly remembered what the puzzle looked like, and I didn't even know if I was reducing the corners correctly. So I went to bed, and this is what happened the next day. Okay, everybody, it's a new day. My voice is dead because it's early morning and I just woke up. Uh, but I have some ideas, and I think I might know how I want to solve this. Um, so I'm thinking it's not as hard as I previously thought to reduce the corners of this puzzle. And I think instead of doing it one at a time, it would be better to solve, say, a layer of corners. So solve these four corners first, and then move on to this sort of uh, second layer of corners. Uh, just solve the corners on it and then just continue with that. Maybe some commutators could come in handy since we have access to whatever slice moves we want, or at least four of them. Uh, the only ones we can't do from this angle are F slice and B slices. The other thing I should mention is that the corners do have corresponding edges, so each corner has two edges that aren't automatically solved. Like you can see this one always will be because it's bandaged, um, but then these two edges need to be solved individually. So I'm gonna try to solve them with the corners too. And we'll see how it goes. And yeah, so the effort to reduce all the corners began. This very first step of that took about 10 minutes, and I'm speeding it up into about 10 seconds for you guys. All right, guys. We've reduced a face of corners. Now we're going to need to get the edges and corners around them uh, to make the full corner. And that sounds scary, but I think we can do it. So I tried for a while after that to make a little more progress, but I wasn't making that much. And so I took a break for a full day. So that was December 3rd. I came back on December 5th with some new ideas that I had gotten through two full nights of sleep, and we'll see if they work out. All right, so it's been a little while, and I've thought about it, and I have some ideas. Uh, I think there are some possible commutators that I can do on this thing. And so I just need to figure out what those commutators are, and then I'll actually be able to move centers around somewhat freely. So, for example, we could move this center and this center and uh, this center by doing like a commutator like this. And that seems helpful. So yeah, commutators are a big concept for inventing any solution to any puzzle, really. And once I started thinking about how to do them on this puzzle, it really did open up some new doors. We've solved all the edges in this sort of second ring. Uh, that's awesome. Let's try to keep going with some corners now. Hopefully commutators will actually help. So as I discovered soon after making that little progress update, the edges weren't all solved on that ring. There was one that I missed, and so I spent quite a while trying to get that last one. This was just some block building, no actual commutators. 
Um, edge commutators on this thing, I should add, are very difficult, and I haven't actually been able to figure out how to do them. But yeah, I finally was able to get those edges, and then I tried doing some corner commutators and things of that nature to reduce the bottom layer corners, which would actually be some significant progress. If we could get this done, we would have four of the eight corners reduced, and that's really good because the corners are a majority of this puzzle. I've made some great progress that I'm really proud of. So we have, we almost, almost have all four corners reduced. But yeah, so we have, as you can see, this corner is the only one missing anything. It's missing this specific corner center. But this corner is fully reduced. This corner is fully reduced. And uh, this corner is fully reduced. I just need to get this one last one, which shouldn't be too challenging. And just notice, even the things that I say are not too challenging on this puzzle, uh, that wasn't too challenging, but that still took about four minutes. Maybe if I tried to do it again, I would be able to do it a little bit faster, but on my first attempt, even the easy stuff took a long time. Nice. Let's go. Yeah, we have four corners successfully reduced. So I took a break, and I came back a couple hours later. I was proud of my progress, but I knew that there was still a lot more progress to make, and at this point, the time was starting to set in. This isn't like most videos on my channel. I had a deadline for this video. This is for a big collaboration, so I had to get this out on December 7th at 10 a.m., and at this point it's December 5th around 3 p.m. It seemed possible, but given that the puzzle wasn't even halfway solved and I had already put over an hour of work into it, I was getting a little bit stressed at this point because of the deadline. My goal right here was to start reducing the final four corners, and I learned in reducing the first four corners that you generally want to solve the wings first, the edges. Because the center corners themselves are actually pretty easy to get into place with commutators, but wings are a lot trickier. I wasn't able to come up with any commutators to actually swap the wings, but fortunately, because of some of my prior cubing experience, I was actually able to pull something in from 5x5 five five that might be able to help us out here. So there's this 5x5 five five alg that swaps two edges. Um, and it's used for like blind solving and things like that. And I don't think it transfers perfectly to here because it involves an F2 uh, and we could only do an FW2. So I want to see what happens if we do this alg but replace the F2s with FW2s and we'll see what it actually affects. Interesting. So it swaps these two edges and this center, this center, and these two centers. So it's almost center safe, which is really exciting actually, because the centers, we've dealt with that before. We know how to solve centers like, like the back of my hand. I can, I can do centers any day of the week. So let's just try this, see what we can, see what we can do. I'm scared that I'm gonna mess up the algo. That's the really scary thing. <sighs> come on, come on, we can do this, we can do this. Okay. We've successfully swapped two edges. We'll just try to keep doing this, and we'll see if we can uh, swap some edges where it's actually a little bit more helpful. So now that I knew that this alg would work and only disrupt centers a little bit, I was really excited and I knew that I could make big progress. I was sad that it did mess up centers to some extent, but now that I have the experience of centers from earlier on in the solve, I was confident in my ability to get them back, and that's sort of something that you'll see throughout this entire attempt. Things that used to be really difficult become things that, while they're still difficult, I can do them at least, and I know that I can do them. And so that was really a satisfying realization. B prime. Yes. Let's go. We have two unsolved edges on the whole cube. So yeah, at that point, I was able to use that alg to solve the last two edges, and this is what I had after that. Now we just have to solve centers again, because we lost a lot of them in the process, but we still have these two corners fully reduced on the back right here, which is nice. Oh no, this one's not anymore. And now we have all our edges solved, and we're going to need to solve the centers again. And the thing that I haven't even brought up a little bit yet is these centers, these cross centers. I haven't even thought about those. And so we're going to have to figure that out later, but first, I want to solve these corner centers. So centers are just a big long chug. I was working hard on centers for quite a while, and uh, then I just got tired. <laughs> Decent progress, guys. It's getting dark. I'm going to stop for now. I'm back. It's nighttime on December 5th, and we're going to see what I can figure out. So at this point, I spent about half an hour working on those corner centers, and it was pretty crazy. I got really frustrated at some points, and I got really motivated at others, but in the end, this is where we ended up.
Yeah, it's just these two centers. We need we have everything except these two centers. Um, and I'm trying to come up with a way to do that on this sort of bandaged puzzle that we've got here. It's not intuitive to me. So I didn't make any more progress on those last two corners that night, so I went to sleep, and on the morning of December 6th, the day before the video was supposed to come out, I started working really hard on this puzzle. I had an idea about these two corners uh, between last night and now, um, and I think it would be really smart to sort of do a calm between one of them and then two of these, because these are all the same. So, believe it or not, that ended up being a pretty good idea. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We have all our corners solved now. Yeah. So, as you can see, every corner has been reducted, also known as reduced, to its former glory. There are four blue snowflake corners, and I'm not sure if they're right. We have, uh, you know, there are two different types of blue snowflake corners, so it's pretty unlikely that we actually got them in the right spots. So there may be some uh, finagling to do later on, but I'm going to just try solving this like a 3x3. Three three. So yeah, solving this like a 3x3 three three was definitely the most straightforward part of the entire solve. I've solved a 3x3 three three enough to not have too much difficulty with this, even if the pieces themselves weren't completely reduced yet. Uh, so this was actually a really motivating step, because after solving it like a 3x3 three three and getting all those corners I've been reducing in the right places, it actually was starting to look solved. Nice. Okay, this doesn't look solved, but it's the most solved it's ever been. Um, we have every edge in the right place, and there are currently many, many centers of this sort, which are cross centers, uh, that need to move around, and there are actually also a decent amount of X centers that need to be moved around as well. So that's our current step, but this is huge. This is really important, because currently, we're really close. <laughs> what more can I say? First, I'd like to get the X centers, since we've been able to do those in the past, and it hasn't been too challenging. So yeah, I ended up changing my mind on what to work on here. I tried solving the X centers, but then somehow I noticed that I could solve one of the cross centers in a pretty easy way. And so I started doing them, and they actually ended up all being really easy. Cross centers were so much easier than I anticipated, which was really nice, and uh, you can see my reaction to that here. Wow. <laughs> Look at this. We have a full layer, a full side. Like, this is done. <laughs> Huge progress. And this one's so close, they're all really close now. The only ones that are off are like these weird, non-asymmetrical ones. Uh, those are the serious problems here, but besides that, we're doing really well. So yeah, centers, as usual, were just a really long chug. I sort of alternated a bit between plus centers and X centers, uh, just trying to get whatever seems easiest at the time, and I made some good progress. All right, guys, we're so close, <laughs> but this is still going to take a while. Um, let me show you where I'm at. So we have two sides totally solved, as you can see. Um, additionally, we have this side, which has all the pieces in the, on the right side, but um, these four centers are going to need to be cycled around a little bit, which on a normal 5x5 would be easy peasy, but since it's bandaged, that always gets a little tricky. Um, but it's doable for sure, we're going to figure it out. We also have this side in the same situation. All of these pieces are correct, it's the four corner centers that need to cycle around. Um, finally, our last two sides are all screwed up. <laughs> I'm confused about what both sides are supposed to look like. I remember that one was a stocking and one was a present, uh, but there are edges that are in the totally wrong spot, and I don't know how that's even possible, right? Because we've got, we've got this edge, which is clearly not belonging here. It doesn't match with this present at all. And this edge is really the one that belongs there. So these two edges are going to need to swap but I can't find any other two edges that also need to swap. And I ended up finding those misplaced edges pretty fast, actually. It was just two edges that looked pretty similar. But this problem was really a sign of a bigger problem to come, uh, which I really didn't notice, but those two sides, the gift and the stocking, were very screwed up, and there was a lot left to do on them. So I had a full 20 minute solving session here and almost nothing happened, and I think it's because I really still did not notice the problem on those two sides. Oh. Oh my goodness. I'm seeing a problem. 
This is the problem I've been low-key trying to avoid the whole time. Now that more of it's coming together, it's more clear that these two corners are just wrong, and also that uh, these, two, these two corners are just wrong. Uh, they're not in the right spots, and we're going to need to do some swapping, and I think that means some edges are going to need to swap too, which is really, really frustrating. But yeah, I'll spare you the details. The idea is that since only one edge is actually solved automatically with the corners, since it's directly bandaged to them, uh, there are two more edges that always need to be solved when you're reducing a full corner. And in a couple instances, I put the wrong two corners there. Uh, because just the way the color scheme works, it's possible to have a few different solutions uh, when you don't actually know what the final product is going to look like. But then once you start putting it together, you realize that they're all in the wrong spots. So I had four corners that were a little messed up like that. And I had to do a lot of those two swaps that we did before that we learned from 5x5. Five five. I did them a lot here just to move those edges around. And then our corner centers were still somewhat unsolved after that. And then there's a small R2, F2, L prime. Nice. <sighs> Every edge is officially solved. And we can just solve this thing. <laughs> Every single edge on here is solved. So that includes wings and midges. You can check for yourself. They all are solved. It's only centers now. Which is funny because that's what we started out solving. That was going to be our first step. Turns out it's a lot better to save centers for last. But, you know, that's okay. We're going to just do this. Let's get it done. So the easiest step was first getting all the cross centers. Now all of our cross centers are solved. That's all the plus signs through here. All we have left are some of these X centers. So now it was just about getting the X centers, and I decided to save the star sides for last because those X centers on those sides are symmetrical, and it doesn't matter where you put them. So I decided to solve the asymmetrical sides first, and I started with the Christmas tree. Yes. Yes. Christmas tree solved. This is so exciting. Next I was working on the snowflake, which was actually really tricky because a snowflake is a complicated shape and I wasn't sure what it was supposed to look like when it was solved. <laughs> Does this snowflake look right to you guys? <laughs> Wait, let me look from far away. I think that's right. Um, I couldn't tell. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's, that's a proper snowflake. That looks good. That looks really good. Next I worked on the gift. <sighs> gift complete. Let's go, look, we have one, two, three sides done, and now we just have our stocking and our two stars. We're actually gonna solve this. I'm like, I hope you can hear my smile. And the stocking was the trickiest of all the asymmetrical sides because there were a lot less unsolved pieces to work with uh, to use in my commutators, but we got it. <sighs> Holy heck. Stocking done. Look at this. Stocking, snowflake, gift, tree, all done. It's just the two stars. The two stars have two incorrect um, corners each, and we just need to solve them, and we'll be done. And yeah, so this wasn't trivial. I still spent a few minutes on this, but in the end, I was able to get it in one of the most satisfying last turns of my life. Guys, this is gonna be it. This is really gonna be it, I think. Yep, look at this. <sighs> star, tree, star, snowflake, stocking, and gift. I'm so, so <laughs> relieved. <laughs> we got it. Let's go. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Happy holidays, and I'll see you on my next video. Later, everybody. Let's go.